Hey guys, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be updated every time I make a new video. Thanks, let's begin. Hey guys, welcome back. Yes, Guy and Smith Files reopened. The reason I'm doing this is because I didn't feel the reviews I did it before were as good as they could have been. So I decided to go back, and some of the notes will be the same, but there's some new content in here, which will be a lot of fun to listen to. Um, so, kick back, relax, let's get into the first novel in this series, where uh, I'm going to focus mainly on the horror stuff. Um, short stories, full lengths, uh, anthologies, you name it, it's all going to be here. This is episode one. Let's begin. <laughs> Werewolf by Moonlight. This is an expensive copy, but you can get a paperback version with the two sequels, plus a new short story, Spawn of the Werewolf, and this Werewolf Omnibus. Uh, this goes for 20 bucks or so right now, might go up in the future. Uh, but yeah, it's worth it. They're really good stories. But I'm not going to hold this the whole video, so I'll just hold this little tiny paperback, which is worth a lot of money. Let's dig into it. The plot. Strange occurrences have been happening. It's a carnivore out there killing the livestock and eventually people. It all started with a dog. A rare breed brought to a home where a boy was bitten, awakened, hungry, turning. The werewolf will rise. With such a short I mean short story. It becomes rather clear that a lot of corners would have to be cut. People seem genuinely accepting of the fact that there is a werewolf. They might need a little coaxing, but it's like, hey, there's a werewolf out there. When our werewolf, Philip Owen, tells his parents of his curse, his father immediately looks into it. It's not like, oh boy, just go back off to bed, you're obviously insane. Call the mental asylum, we need some straight jackets up here. No, he comes to the conclusion that it, it's true, his son is a werewolf. In like a couple of pages, because one of his fingers is now longer than the other. I mean, okay. I guess things like buildup and plot don't need to exist really. Um, or be discussed. Basically with the finger thing, if your third finger is like an inch longer or something, then you're a werewolf. It's funny, <laughs> but nice to have this added lore. The werewolf also cannot cross running water. Authority figures like PC Winters and Chief Sergeant Ford are especially useless. They don't discover things until there's about 10 pages left. I thought there should have been this big hunt for the beast. Build up some of the town folk, have them go out and be slaughtered by this werewolf. Make us care. But you have to understand, this is a pulpy, trashy 70s novel. They were written to be short and to the point. And with all that said, by the time I closed the book, I was oddly satisfied. It has a poorly executed story, aloof characters that are way too easygoing, and a weak ending. It felt like the author was trying to keep everything at a certain length, and he was running out of room for words. I feel like he could only have 10 pages per chapter, and that was the max. So it's like, I can only fit so much in 10 pages, I gotta write really little. Yet it's Guy N. Smith's writing that sold me on this book. Not to forget to mention this is Guy's first official novel or novella. It is patchy but well told. He did write other stuff before, like short stories. He cemented himself to the foundation of a cozy environment. Descriptions of the Black Hills, Moonlight, and Streams felt very Celtic. I swear, if they added a gypsy to the story, it'd be perfect. The exteriors are vivid, and the interiors are warm with a roaring fireplace and tea kettle whistling. It's so rural, and it becomes quite a shock when two characters go to see a werewolf movie in a theater. Up until that point, I felt like this village was cut off from civilization or something. As for the characters, there's Gordon Hall. He's not really likable. He's a hunter and reporter. He does some stuff that's 
Wow. For instance, he's shooting someone's dog. I get that they think it's gone rabid, but there's really no proof to back up that claim. And he just kind of finds it and shoots it, I believe, if I can remember correctly. Uh, he's also screwing Margaret, who's married to Vic Gunn. She wants to run away with Gordon. God knows why. Well, I mean, there is reasons. Vic is kind of like this sort of uninteresting, pathetic, miserable man. But he's not going to let some man take his wife away. Understandable. Philip and his parents, Bloodwin and Gween Owen, are kind of in the story, kind of not. Like, you get Philip's thoughts when he's turning into a werewolf and when he's hunting and it's like very dark thoughts very disturbing but Bloodwin and Gween Bloodwin I think is the father and Gween is the mother maybe the other way around but they don't offer much to the story in terms of what actually happens at the end. They don't really play a part, but I know what the father comes back in the sequels. So. There's Chief Sergeant Ford, like I mentioned, and his men like PC Winter and others. Useless. They try to assume what's going on and they know nothing. They know nothing. Like I said, the officers are not really that important to the story, but are necessary to move the plot along. There are other minor characters like Peter Pike, who's a douche has a motorcycle, takes the girl out to go see the movie, and then she ends up running off because he's such a jerk. And Peter is used to steer the cast of characters in the wrong direction and assume that he is the werewolf, or the killer. Going into another direction, the descriptions of Woodland and Moonlit Sky are vivid and paint a gloomy picture over the pages. Now, I mention this again because that's a staple for Guy and Smith. He's a very well-educated writer. It comes off as kind of like poetic very beautiful writing. Gordon Hall hunting the beast with his yellow Labrador Remus. It's just, it paints an eerie image and it's like, are they gonna make it out? Is the dog gonna be okay? There's an uneasy sense of the hunter becoming the hunted. It shows that Guy's writing is not only prim, proper, and pulpy, but primeval. Gordon and the werewolf basically stalk each other. It's a well-written tense scene for sure. It makes you feel like you should run away at a decent speed. Much like this book's pacing. The pacing in this book, like I said, it's uneven. Philip becomes a werewolf about 15 pages in. And then around the 50 page mark he kills for the first time. And so then around 100 pages in, the book is over. It says 110 pages, but the book starts on page 5 and there's a blank page in between the chapters. So yeah, it's less than 100 pages. It's a very thin book. Also, Philip's gradual change is well done. He goes from being horrified and mortified while trying to hide the evidence of the bloodied clothing under his bed to sneaking in the gun's home and spying on Margaret in the bathtub. You would think with the quick setups and the short lengths that this would be a fast read and sometimes Guy's vivid descriptions go on for a smidge too long. Also, the affair between Gordon and Margaret comes out of nowhere, pretty much. And it only escalates as the story goes on. But they consider marriage after knowing each other for like a week. Gordon sees Margaret, his lover, with her husband. She's pregnant with his child. Gordon's child. And assumes that Vic, her husband, will think it's his. Even though he does find out that they're mingling with each other. Even though he and his wife barely had sex since he became busy and worked late. It's gotta be his child, right? There's at least three times where Margaret and Gordon go at it. It's, uh, explicit. Speaking of the number three, within the book there's really only three kills by the werewolf, and one isn't even directly related to the werewolf. Heart attack. The gore! A mangled woman is discovered, a man is decapitated with a buzzsaw, and a woman has a heart attack. As for animal killings, several rabbits, sheep including a pregnant one which is nasty, and the deer I believe are mutilated. It's not too gory, but there are quite a few highlights that make it gory enough. For the potential movie music, now this is a new segment on my channel where I'm going to be talking about which composer I would use to do the music for a movie for the book I'm reviewing. Now, for Werewolf by Moonlight, I'd have to give it to Danny Elfman, who composed a lot of Tim Burton movies, but given his score for The Wolfman 2010, yeah. 
I know he is a popular choice, but his music had just the right amount of darkness to it in that movie. It's really made you feel like you were in the middle of the woods being stalked by a beast. Overall, this book is quite a doozy. It has a good killer too. The story as a whole was a little hard to digest. People are too accepting of strange happenings and the cause of all of them. It's like, really? You're gonna believe that? It's a short book with some minor pacing issues, but I think if you're either into Guy's work or just enjoy pulpy horror, then give this one a look for sure. If not, you might enjoy it. It's definitely an acquired taste. Well, overall, I give... Werewolf by Moonlight, a 2 out of 5. Now, 2 out of 5 isn't too, too bad. Huh, pun intended. That's not even a pun. Never mind. It's pretty good for a pulpy horror novel. I would still read it, so don't take it the rating too seriously. So here's the question for you. What would you do if you were in Philip Owen's shoes? Would you give in to the beast or try to figure a way out of it? Thank you all for watching, and I am Brian Gatto, the horror show host. Make sure to like, comment on as well as share this video. Like my Facebook fan page and support me on Patreon, or even a dollar a month will help keep this channel going on strong, and I'd greatly appreciate it. Plus, you get access to body counts and other music videos that you cannot get on YouTube because of copyright and date restriction. Monetary support, if you do not want to support the channel on Patreon, which is a monthly fee, you can always do a one-time payment through PayPal at horrorshow37 at gmail.com. If you don't want to support me with any money, you can always show your support by hitting that notification bell to be notified every time I make a new video, and as always, subscribe. I'll try to do these videos as a guy in Smith Files reopened once a month. Stay tuned.